All right, good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started. So last time, uh, we briefly review uh, statics. Uh, we talk about uh, statical, uh, static equilibrium. So for any object uh, to be in equilibrium, you must have all the force uh, at together be zero, right? So total force or summation of the force be zero, and also summation of the moment, uh, all the moment at together must be zero. And for the 2D case, uh, this uh, equations, a set of six equations, uh, actually can be uh, simplified to only three independent equations, right? For example, you have uh, summation of the force in the x direction, be zero, right? And uh, the summation of the force in the y direction, be zero. And uh, the summation of moment, be zero, all right? Okay, so uh, today we're going to start um, to learn the new content uh, for this course. So the first chapter uh, is we'll first look at the stress, strain, and the safety. So in this chapter, we're going to cover many four uh, key elements. Uh, one is uh, what's the force uh, inside the object we call internal force. And second, uh, what's the stress and strain? And then we're going to look at the Hooke's law that describes what's the relation between stress and strain. And then we're going to look at uh, what's the allowable load, basically uh, how much load you can apply to a structure, uh, make it safe, right? So what's the maximum load you can apply uh, to an uh, element? Okay, so let's first look at the internal force, right? So what's the internal force? As by uh, definition, it's basically the force uh, inside an object. So why we need to know the force inside? Because oftentimes um, there are structures uh, that fail somewhere, right? So a crack may generate somewhere. So why the crack generate there? Maybe there's too much load there. So how do you know? Uh, so we need to find it locally, what's the force at a specific location? And that's oftentimes inside the object, right? And for example, uh, you have cells uh, in a tissue, in a human body. So you want to know what kind of environment uh, a cell is under, right? Or you put uh, some of your um, component uh, key element in object, you want to know locally what kind of uh, loading situation, right? So uh, also you want to check locally uh, whether that any specific location is safe enough, right? For a structure to be safe, all the elements everywhere need to be safe. So for all this reason, we need to know what's the uh, internal force. Now, how can we determine the internal force? It's inside the object. So if you um, write the equation equilibrium um, just for the whole object, you may not be able to find it. For example, uh, this bar here, right, uh, attached to a wall, and you're applying load P on the right side here, right? So you apply this load, and then if you draw this whole thing as a free body diagram, as shown here, so you're going to have a reaction R here, right? Then from the free body diagram, then you can get the uh, equation of, right, the equation of equilibrium. And for this case, you have R minus P equals zero, right? So you will find out R. Uh, equals P, that's 20 kilo newton. Okay, but that's the reaction from the wall. And what about this uh, inside the bar? Okay, for example, for this green uh, particles here, we want to know what's the force in this location. Right? So for the bar, for example, we want to know at this location, what's the, uh, let's call it A, what's the force here? So what's the uh, force, internal force, we use N uh, to denote it. Okay, so what's the force inside here? Okay, so how can we determine? Make a cut, right? So the key is you make a cut, all right? So once you make a cut, then you break, uh, right? Virtually you break uh, the, the object into uh, one or two or multiple portions, right? In this case, you break this one uh, bar into two, right? So when you break, then you can have, uh, for example, if you draw this left side here, uh, this is the 
point B and this point A. So you have the reaction R here, right? And then this is the interaction. This is the cutting A. Okay, so or you can draw the right side. So you have uh, this object here, right? So on this side, you have the load P applied. Okay, now when you make a cut, right? Now this surface here at the location A, we know it's not a free surface it's inside the object. So there must be action interaction for both sides, right? So for example, there may be a force applying here, a force applying here, all right? Now we label it N, right? And this two should be equal because that's action reaction. Right? So this two must be the, I mean, equal in terms of magnitude. There, are, of course, there will be opposite direction, right? Okay. Now, um, is this a two uh, basically object now, right? So we can say, oh, this is a free body diagram. So you can have the free body diagram. Uh, that's the first one, or you can have the second free body diagram. And now, is this are this complete free body diagram? And also, do we need the two, or which one we can use? And in fact, here we only try to find the internal uh, load, right? Internal force. So maybe you just need the one. Okay, let's start with one. Let's say we use the one on the right. It's number two here. Okay. So now for this free body diagram, so we draw the free body. Diagram. Okay. So first, is this a complete free body diagram? Maybe not. Because when you uh, separate this surface here, right, in general, there are action reaction. So you may have a force, N, as we label. But you may also have a moment, M, here, right? Well, maybe it's not, but we don't know. So in general, you just assume there is a moment. Right? And you assume there is a moment, therefore, you label it. And then you find out whether it's zero or not zero. Okay, and also there may be a shear force, right? So a shear force here. So let's use a letter V to label it. Okay, now this company, uh, yeah, we cannot think of other things, right? Actually, other than gravity. So gravity may be here, but we can ignore it, right? So in this course, we always, uh, oftentimes, unless specifically say, we just ignore uh, gravity, just make it thing a little bit easier, right? Um, just show the concept. Okay, so now for this free body diagram, okay, we say it's complete because there's no other load. Okay, now for this uh, free body diagram, then we can write the equation of equilibrium. Okay, so what's the equation of equilibrium? First, sigma fx equals zero, right? And the x, this will be the x direction. Okay, so this is the x direction, all right? So sigma fx should be zero. So we have negative n, negative p should be add together equals zero. So that immediately give us n equals to negative p, right? Okay, also we may should have sigma fy equals zero. And that give us, okay, so negative v, that's only load in the y direction must be zero. Okay, we must have all the moment to any point equals zero. So let's say to point A equals zero. So therefore that the moment we label there, right? And that should be zero. Right. Okay, so this two zero, therefore we know in a bar <coughs> in this situation and the actual load, there should be no moment and no shear force at that location you cut. Right. So later on, actually, we can just draw the free body diagram like this. So you have the N here, and you have the P here, right? So this is N. Or in this case, we already find out, uh, we know P equals to 20K. And so N is negative 20K. So we actually uh, find out it should be like this. Okay. So there'll be 20K here, and then 20K here. Right, so this is the cut location. Okay, so basically here I kind of imply. Okay, what's the uh, n equals negative 20 mean? Okay, so that's come up 
the concept of the sign convention. Right? So what's the sign convention for internal internal force? Okay, so the we normally uh, define this way. So it's positive if it's uh, if it's away from the surface. And then it will be negative it will, when it's towards the point towards the surface. Okay. And in fact, in this case, uh, if we look back here, right? So when you have things uh, towards the surface, when you have things towards the surface, um, then it means uh, this way. So you have a load here, right? Uh, this here, right? So in this case, if it's towards surface, that's this way, right? And then if this one, if it's away from the surface, that means this way. Okay. So basically, this is a positive because it's stretching things, tension. That's positive. And this kind of situation, when you compress on an object, and that's what we call negative. And so basically, we define. Uh, an internal force we define positive and negative by how it deforms object right so it's based on deformation okay so if it's compression it's negative if it's tension if it's a stretch then it's, uh, then it's um, basically if it's stretch then it's positive all right Okay, so um, here are just a few more uh, things I uh, just want to uh, clarify. All right, so we know the key is make a cut, right, to determine the internal force. So where you want to find the internal force, then you make cut right there, all right? <coughs> okay, another uh, clarification is internal force, okay, is uh, basically uh, a force inside, right? So it's a pair, right? So in this part, we define positive if it's uh, pulling, if it's away from the surface. Right? So for any free body, for any part, uh, you must have a pair of force applying to it to reach equilibrium, right? Like what we said here, you have this bar, you're applying force uh, P on this side, 100 Newton, and then you must, there must be a force on this side. 100 newton as well, right? To be in equilibrium, right? So then we say this bar is under 100 newton. Right? So it's not under 200, right? So it's not uh, added. Those two you cannot add it. Okay, that's one. Then second is about the direction, the positive. Okay. So when you when we write the equation of equilibrium, we use uh, assume a positive is in this one direction, right? Uh, but when we uh, define the internal force, it's, as we just said, it's based on you compress something or you um, stretch something. Stretch positive, and if it's compression, then it's negative. Okay. All right, so here is a simple cartoon showing here, right? So you imagine you're, you have a, a big, uh, a lot of people stay in line uh, holding hands, right? So if I'm here, I'm here pulling, let's say 100 Newton here, right? And then, um, right, there's another person here holding you, let's say Doug Lewis here holding you for, of course, must be 100, because otherwise uh, you won't be equilibrium, right? So we must have applying the equal amount of force to you to uh, maintain equilibrium. Okay, or, but when you, if this is a you, okay, then you will feel 100 because your hand here must be tight enough to hold 100, and this hand here must hold it 100, and you must just hold it 100, 
right? So your your hands anywhere, your either your left hand or your right hand, you will be there holding 100. So it's 100, right? Everywhere. So you're not holding your hands, not feeling 200, because you just feel the person next to you, um, or if for this person I'm pulling 100, right? Because I'm pulling 100, so this hand will feel 100. And then this part has hold 100, 100, 100. So it's 100 everywhere. All right. And this thing you can also be see here from the uh, sling, right? So if you stretch a spring, a stretch is, you can see here when you stretch it, you have to apply a pair of force, right? You cannot just one hand stretch it. You have to use two hand stretch it. And when you stretch it, you can see here the distance in the middle, all these rings. The distance they are equal. That means they are under the same force. So basically, the same force goes from your left hand to uh, your right hand, and that's all equal. They apply opposite direction, but equal amount. All right.